Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. And we are here at the IEEE for Global Power, Energy and Communication Conference in Cappadocia, Turkey. And we are here to present this amazing paper. And the title is Configuration of the Actor and Critic Network of the Deep Reinforcement Learning Controller for Multi-Energy Storage System. And the authors of this paper are Paula Paramo from University of Seville, Marta Noemi Acosta from University of Southeastern Norway, Dr. Jose Luis Reda and Professor Peter Paleski from Delft University of Technology, Francisco Sanchez from uh, Loughborough University in the United Kingdom, and finally, Juan Manuel Roldan Fernandez and, Ma and Manuel Burgos from the University of Seville, Universidad de Sevilla in Spain. And as you can see, this paper is the, is the collaboration between TU Delft, Lofro University, University of Southeastern Norway, University of Seville, and the study were done inside the DGNC's lab, the Digital Energy System Laboratory. And let's start this paper with a sh very short introduction. The DGNC's lab is the initial from the Digital Energy System Laboratory. And inside this laboratory, we are developing the new, f the new or the future energy system based on the use of digital energy. And inside this lab, we are developing the next generation of um, energy system based on digital technologies. And in this lab, we have been working for many years in real-time simulation, but also to enhance the knowledge of digital technologies applied inside the electrical power systems. And in 2020, with the former PhD student Francisco Sanchez Gorostiza, uh, a paper was published in the IEEE transaction of Smart Grid. And in this paper, a deep reinforcement learning controller was presented in order to manage the state of charge of multi electrical energy storage system with the special purpose of following frequency response for the GB system. And in this paper, we present a very nice development of using ultracapacitor battery energy storage and battery systems in order to compensate frequency variations. However, now that we have a more powerful hour inside the digital energy system, we start to consider reducing the computational power and taking the advantages of the hardware that we have at the lab in order to reduce the time and make more efficient the training of these, uh, uh, the training of the deep reinforcement network to solve this interesting problem. And that is the motivation behind the paper that we are presenting today. The idea is that the computational burden and the time required to train the deep reinforcement learning, it can be extremely high. And as a consequence, the, the, the problem of solving the, the, informant, the informant reinforcement learning control for frequency multi-energy systems is very high. And we are interested in reducing that time. And one of the possibility is by defining the appropriate training hardware and software to do the job. And in this paper, we are presenting four training configuration of the actor and critic network in order to have the most efficient configuration, the lower computational time, but also considering the very specific case of the frequency control of multi-energy system. And before we move forward, it's quite important that you understand the deep reinforcement learning applied for frequency control. 
And as you can see over here, I, am, I, am, I will start this, this, this description saying that we are using deep neural networks. That means that the complexity uh, required for this deep neural network is extremely high. However, this allows us to create a, a very amazing function for approximation. However, what is interesting is that this neural network, deep neural network, they are quite attractive for reinforcement learning control techniques. And that is the reason that we are using for the problem of a state of charge. If you look here in this figure at the bottom left, you can see that there are several components, the agents and inside the agent, we have the policy and the, the deep reinforcement learning algorithms. The entry of the agents are observation coming from the environments and the output from the agents are actions going to the environment. And from there, we can have what we call the rewards. When we consider the deep reinformer, uh, the deep reinforcement learning algorithms, there are at least three very wide categories that you can find in the literature. One of them is the base value, the other one is the policy base, and finally the actor critics. Here in red color, I am highlighting this configuration because that is the purpose of this paper, using the actor critic algorithm for the deep reinforcement learning. And when we think about these algorithms, well, the agents can have different configurations. In one, the actor network can give you, for a given observation, its return an action and maximize the expect accumulative, cumulative reward. But also it's possible that the critic network, which uh, for a given observation and action, it will return the expected value of the cumulative reward of this task. And we took the advantages of that and we create these two very interesting scenes for the reinforcement learning framework of the state of charge control. As you can see, the state of charge control, we have the agent and the agent is a classical actor critic type. And inside this, also we have the environment and the environment you can see here at the bottom at the environment basically we have the multi-energy system battery energy storage ultra capacitor and flywheel and also we have the enhanced frequency response and there are some actions in this case the actions are the control reference of the energy storage system and we have some observations and that are basically coming from the state of charge of this multi-energy system. And the reward is basically a function that we create in order to penalize if the state of charge is now inside the predefined values by using the state of charge error. But now we want to take the advantages of the powerful hardware that we have at the lab. And for that reason, we need to understand how the hardware behaves in terms of computation. The classical and probably the oldest approach for solving problems in deep reinforcement learning is using serial computing. In serial computing, we have a problem. We divide that problem in small instructions, and they are going to the computational power to the processor in order to get the solution. But later, with the development of faster and more powerful hardware, well, we start to use what we call the parallel computing. In the parallel computing, we can have one or more problems. We divide those problems into a small instructions that they are assigned to each one of the processors. And then we can have the full solution. The good news for this is that the parallel computing is a toolbox included inside MATLAB Simulink, and that allows us to combine this powerful functionality with the controller, deep reinforcement learning controller that we develop in Simulink. Now, what I will tell you is the experimental results. For the experimental results, we are using the frequency controller that is called the enhanced frequency controller, providing reference to the multi-energy system. However, in this case, we have a modification for the environment where we are taking actions coming from the reinforcement learning agent. And of course, inside the deep reinforcement learning agent, we have what we call the policy and also we have the critic.
we create four different four different training configurations. In the training configuration, we have two different networks, the actor and critic. On the first configuration, we use CPU CPU for actor and critic. And in the configuration D, we use the, C, the GPU graphical processing unit for actor and critic. And B and C, they are configurations where we have a mix between CPU and GPU. And we run two different tests, one test based on serial computing and one, pa and one using parallel computing. Here the results are presented on base on showing the training and the total training and for the serial computing. Okay, and in this case, in this case, we are using the time in seconds and hours to represent all the calculations. What is interesting here to show is a result that it was already very well known. Serial computing, serial computer is not quite good. As you can see over here, the time that we spend for training the four different uh, configurations, as you can see, is between 3.6 hours to 4 hours. But if you look on the right hand side, we have the result for the parallel computing. And what is surprising is that in this case, in this case, parallel computing allowed a reduction that could be above 75% or around. 75% time compared with the serial computing. What was not surprising, what was not surprising was that the configuration for training configuration B, I mean using CPU and GPU fail in both cases. And that was basically a problem related with the deep reinforcement learning to bots that is not supporting that training. Finally, for the configuration CPU, CPU, you can see here how depending of the episodes during the training, you can see the time that it was elapsed. And it's not surprising that the parallel configuration was lower compared with the serial configuration. Finally, to close this presentation, I have here a few conclusions. We presented here, uh, we use here the deep deterministic policy gradient for the training of the deep reinforcement neural network. We assess two different hardware schemes using uh, central processing unit CPU and graphic processing units in GPU. And we use four different configurations of them together with two different approach of programming, serial computing and parallel computing. And finally, what was important is that the parallel computing show a massive 73% reduction on the computational time. And finally, the use of CPU and GPU can provide better time for the solution. Well, this is all for this presentation. Thank you very much for watching. And now it's time for question and answer. Thank you.